everybody, and welcome into another edition of Inside Boxing Live. I am your host, Dan Canobio. Appreciate you tuning in week after week on this little boxing program that we put together for you. The boxing world is definitely buzzing. This month of May has delivered in more ways than one. If you're watching over on YouTube, CompuBox TV, thank you very much. You can also stream the show on the Fubo Sports Network and the Pluto TV app, uh, the boxing channels where you can find this show. Now, last week was one of the craziest weeks in boxing memory. We had Errol Spence and the Manny Pacquiao announcement. We had the Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury news. And we also had an undisputed fight at 140 pounds, won by Josh Taylor. Uh, breaking that down and then this upcoming week of fights with Devin Haney and Lito Donaire all, also in action is Lee Groves. You've probably heard the name referenced on many boxing telecasts. If you're a boxing fan, you know the name Lee Groves. He is a boxing historian. He is a colleague of mine at uh, CompuBox. He is our lead researcher. He's one of our op Operators. He is an all-around great, great guy. And Lee Groves makes his Inside Boxing Live debut somehow. Waited 100 episodes to get one of the best guys in boxing on to, uh, to talk about this upcoming fight with Devin Haney and Jorge Linares. Uh, Nolito Donari going up against Nardine Ubali. And we'll get Lee's thoughts on Manny Pacquiao and where he ranks historically. If he could pick up a win against Errol Spence, which I probably don't think is going to happen, but I am not going to just count out Manny Pacquiao. Man, what news that was when that broke, uh, when Pacquiao just dropped it in on Twitter, a little boop. Uh, you know, I'm fighting Errol Spence in, in August. Uh, deal with it. Uh, you know, the guy has fought for now three decades, almost four decades. I think it is four decades. And uh, yes, it's going to be an event and a half uh, in Las Vegas. I'll be there ringside. I'll also be there ringside for Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder three, which I think is sneaky going to be a really good fight because I don't think that Tyson Fury could fight any better than he did in that second fight. And I don't think Deontay Wilder could fight any worse. So if they come back somewhere in the middle, we have ourselves a classic heavyweight fight. And hopefully it ends up in Allegiant Stadium, uh, home of the Raiders, because I really want to check out that stadium. And I think, uh, you know, more stadium fights, the better, because it shows that boxing is in a healthy place, because I really do think it's in a healthy place. Don't listen to any of the haters, okay? Because we had a great month of May, week after week, fight after fight, outstanding fights. You know, you got this man, uh, you know, this Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul shenanigans uh, in June 6th, which I think is going to be a good event. Uh, not bad for boxing, not exactly good for boxing. It is what it is. You know, Tiafimo Lopez in action in June. Javante Davis in action in June. Boxing's in a good place. Let's talk about it more with our friend, Lee Groves. Here he is. It is time to bring in our guest this week. He is a friend of CompuBox. He is a friend of mine. He's a friend of boxing. He is <laughs> Lee Groves. He is the walking boxing encyclopedia. Great guy. Follow him on Twitter at Lee Groves Boxing. Lee Groves, you're making your debut on Inside Boxing Live. Figured we wait over 100 episodes. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. Of course, man. Uh, like I mentioned, you're on Twitter at Lee Groves Boxing. What's it been like on Twitter? Have you been, uh, have you found yourself in any arguments? Have you been called any terrible names or has it been a pleasant experience so far? It has been a pleasant experience so far because uh, I pretty much stayed in my lane. <laughs> I go in and I, I talk about boxing history, sometimes a little bit of sports history when Phil Mickelson won the PGA. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and the, the, the uh, reception has been very positive so far. Wow. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Wow. See, yeah, when you're on it long, well, let me ask you in a year from now, see how it did not. I, I know how right. you are. You're, <laughs> you, are, you attract what you put out there. You're a great guy. And a uh, big part of the CompuBox team, as we're going to get into the CompuBox stats here, we're getting into this week of fights. We're coming off of a great weekend with Josh Taylor defeating Jose Ramirez. And the beat goes on in boxing. It's been a great month of May. And this yeah. weekend, we have another uh, great month. We've got a double header, obviously, on two different networks, because that's how boxing rolls. Let's start with <laughs> Devin Haney versus Jorge Linares. Uh, it's on, it's on uh, the zone. Devin Haney. Now, interesting guy. He is the quote-unquote email champion at 135 pounds because everything happened with, with Teofimo Lopez. And he's a guy that I think is, if you ask any boxing fan, is kind of trailing behind his contemporaries, whether it's Teofimo Lopez, whether it's Ryan Garcia when he gets back in the ring, or whether it's Tank Davis or whoever else you have uh, in that general weight area because no one really knows like 
what his style is, and we'll get into that too. But I want to ask you, when you go up a guy against Jorge Linares, 35 years old, who's been in a, a lot of wars, let's see a sound decision from, uh, from Haney. He wins 10 rounds out of 12. Is that really enough for him? It depends on how he wins those 10 rounds. Uh, you know, we all know that he is a very good technical boxer, mm-hmm. especially for a kid 22 years old, one of the youngest uh, world-class fighters youngest world champion in some eyes uh 22 years old uh he's technically sound but can he add to his game as far as explosiveness uh that that seemed to be missing and and he took a lot of criticism for the way that he won against 38 year old yoriakis gamboa coming out he won every round statistically he was dominant but he didn't finish the job the way that he was expected to as a much younger fighter and a much more, you know, taller, longer, Mm -hmm. technically sound, faster. He had all the advantages his way. You know, it's interesting that you bring up like uh, that fight too. And you bring up, you know, a lot of people have been posting or the you know promotion for this fight is that big knockout he had over Abduliev. And I was there ringside, one of the most brutal knockouts I've ever seen. But I think that kind of boxed Haney in a little bit because that's not who he is. Devin Haney is not a one-punch uh, knockout guy. He's a guy that, uh, you know, prides himself on very good defense. I mean, look at his last five opponents. They've been held to 17% of their total connects. He, he's just a sound boxer. He's got good defense, good jab, good body work. Do you think that, that knockout kind of, I wouldn't say hurt him because you have to make your, your way in boxing. Somehow you have to get grab headlines one way, but it kind of like constricted him to the people thinking that he was like this knockout guy. Yeah. Um, but over, over time, we've learned what Devin Haney is uh, over time. And, you know, uh, yeah, in a way it has, it raised the bar to a level that, uh, that people, you know, it, the expectations are up here, mm-hmm. but he, he, he dominates in a different way. In fact, one of the most interesting stats regarding Devin Haney is the fact that, you know, there is dominance in terms of wins and losses. There's also dominance in terms of round by round dominance. Yep. And coming into this fight, he has outlanded his opponents in terms of total connects in 53 consecutive rounds. Wow. That's like, uh, you know, within Cal Ripken Jr.'s 2632 <laughs> game streak, yeah. there was 8,000 innings that he played consecutively in that streak. Wow. So, Lee, you're not just a boxing historian. You, you, you'll sprinkle in a little baseball nugget, <laughs> some golf. That's why we have you here. That's why we love you. Yeah, it's interesting with Haney. And uh, you know, his stats are will jump out at you if you kind of peel them back. And I actually like this partnership. Uh, that he has with Ben Davison now. Obviously, we just saw Ben Davison guide uh, Josh Taylor uh, to that win over Jose Ramirez. Uh, Ben Davison is like a defense first guy. Ben Davison prides himself on on, on, uh, having his fighters, you know, go to the body. And that's something we've seen from Haney is he's improving his body work. He's got his last fight, uh, 33% of his landed punches were body shots. And if he wants to slow down Linares, who is kind of shifty, I would expect that to be even more concentrated, the body work. (laughs) Absolutely. That that was a shortcoming of his game in previous years. He was a headhunter. But in his last fight against Gamboa, he did widen his target. And he's going to need to do that against the more experienced opponents Mm -hmm. that he's going to face from here on in. Yeah. And with Linares, a guy uh, who's had a great career, 35 years old, has been in some wars. Obviously, his his brightest moment was going, you know, toe to toe with Lomachenko, knocking him down, uh, ultimately being, you know, stopped, but up on a card, tied on another card. Uh, it's going to be interesting for him. Uh, you know, all five of his losses have come via stoppage. Uh, he's got the scar tissue problem that you wrote about in the CompuBox preview. How do you see this fight playing out? I see it as a clash of styles. I think that Haney is going to be the boxer. He's taller, he's longer. Um, he's going to do what he does. I think he will feel pressure to uh, to sort of go above and beyond what he's what he's normally done. 
But if Haney is what we think he is, based on what we've seen so far, he should be able to take the measure of Linares, uh, who, yes, he came off a fourth round TKO over Morales, but Morales opened a cut over the corner of Linares' left eye in round one. So we cannot discount the possibility of a cut stoppage TKO. But if form holds, I think that Haney will pick his spots and uh, and win fairly comfortably on decision. Yeah, I tend to agree. Then we'll see what's next. I think the winner of this is supposed to square off a T. Fimo Lopez. Interesting times at 135. That is uh, one fight down here this weekend on the main event. On the other side of things, we're going to break down Nonito Donare going up against Nordine Obali. All right, Lee, uh, we got one fight down. We got our next main event over on Showtime, part of their great summer schedule. And we got Nonito Donari, a living legend of the smaller weights, going up against Nordin Ubali, who's very tough, WBC bantamweight uh, world champion. Ton of interesting stats in this fight, ton of interesting storylines, because whenever you involve Nonito Donaire in a fight, or Donare, I should say, uh, <laughs> you are talking about a guy who has a ton of titles, a guy that's going for records. If he wins this fight, he will be the oldest ever bantamweight world champion. He'll, be, he'll join a long list of fighters uh, that have won world titles in three different decades. So you're getting up there in like rarefied air with uh, a, a Donare, but this is going to be a tough fight because Obali is a defensive wizard. He, he is very good on defense. He's a southpaw. And his style, he, he, he's a two-time Olympian. He, he uh, uses these head feints, shoulder feints, hand feints, leg feints. He, he has the ability of slowing down the action to where he prefers it to be. Now, Donaire is 38 years old, so maybe he would be in favor of a slower-paced fight. And he also has the bigger punch of mm-hmm. the two. And you talk about the history of this fight. Uh, Nonito is already the second oldest guy ever to win a share of the Bantamweight title. He was 34 years old when he beat Ryan Burnett. But now if he succeeds on Saturday, uh, he will beat the record held by his countryman, uh, Jerry Penalosa, by over two years. I mean, he would shatter it. It's it's crazy. It's the guys like I said. He's a he's a living legend. He's the nicest guy in boxing. Yeah, and he's going up against a tough opponent, like you said, who slows down, uh, who slows down the, the the fight to a crawl, takes away your jab. I mean, you know that Donaire has that huge uh, hook. He's gonna have to. I mean, for that hook, you're gonna have to throw a jab first, and it'll be interesting to see what Obali can do in there. But you take a look at the. No, another thing with this fight, and we talked about this last week, Taylor and Ramirez, I told everyone was going to be a great fight. Mm. Obviously, we knew that, but a big reason is because the reliance on power shots. Same thing yeah. with this fight. A majority of the punches landed in Donare versus Ubali is go- are going to be power shots. They're guys that throw not a lot of punches, but when they do throw, they are power shots. But Lee, let's take a look at the 118 title picture. Obviously, Ubali, WBC champ. Nayua Anue, who is the uh, pound for pound at the top of the list in all weight classes. He's got WBA, IBF in ring. Then you got John Real Casemiro, who's got the WBO strap. You know, Donaire's talking about, I just don't want to just win one title. I want to become undisputed. It's going to be tough terrain. Casemiro's fighting Rigandau in August. Uh, you know, this, this 118 title picture is intriguing. It's very intriguing. And in fact, Donaire's last fight was a decision loss to in a way, that was a great but fight. it was, but, but, you know, not a lot was expected of Nonito going into the fight because he was going to get up against the monster mm-hmm. number two or three pound for pound fighter in the world, just knocking everybody out. And here is, here's Nonito at 36 years old. <laughs> what, you know, what's he going to do? W- what he did was he, uh, he busted up his face. He, he, uh, you know, he came on stronger uh, as the fight went on, and he put on a very good, credible performance. If you could improve your standing as a fighter through a loss, that was what Donaire did in that fight. Couldn't agree more. I mean, no one was really giving him much of a shot. Uh, you know, in a way, was this guy, this monster, as his name says, and he put up a heck of a fight. And many people were like, wait a second. Denari's coming off of a loss. Why is he getting a shot at Ubali's title? Because like you just said, if you can present yourself in, even if you lose and you look good, 
And uh, obviously COVID has, has played, has wreaked havoc on a lot of these fights, but I don't think anyone's going to complain when they see Nito Donare in there uh, looking for more hardware, looking for more, uh, you know, titles. It's going to be tough. Ubali, like we said, is a, is a very hard puncher and he's also very hard to hit. All right, Lee, on the other side, last segment of the show, we had some bombshells last week. Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury 3. We'll get into it all. All right, Lee, final segment of the show. And man, last week was just between the Taylor Ramirez fight and some of these announcements all week long, the Tyson Fury uh, must fight Deontay Wilder by Summer's End News, that, which came earlier in the week. And then Friday, Manny Pacquiao dropped out a bomb on Twitter that he is fighting Errol Spence Jr. Uh, in August. So it's going to be a very busy uh, summer for us at CompuBox, and uh, fight fans should enjoy a lot of great fights. But let's talk about Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence. And, uh, you know, I had put a video out, and I talked about how I think a lot of pressure – is going to be on Errol Spence come fight night because he's expected to win. He's a huge favorite. He's almost expected to stop uh, Manny Pacquiao. But, you know, as you peel the layers back, which we do at CompuBox, that's not really what Errol Spence really has been over his last couple fights. He was early on a big power puncher, but he's a guy that's going to just break you down. That's how I see this fight going. How about you? Same thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, Errol Spence. Again, we, we were talking about this earlier in the show with Devin Haney. He sets the bar high with previous performances, and that's the expectation that, uh, that the fighter goes in with every time. Same thing with Errol Spence. He was expected to absolutely decimate Mikey Garcia because he was the bigger guy, the stronger guy. He was a southpaw. He's a great body puncher. Everything seemed to be tipped toward Errol Spence in that direction. And the same thing is going to be here uh, against Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao hasn't fought in nearly two years. He's 42 years old. He's, uh, you know, he's a historic figure, but how much more can you do? I mean, Pacquiao has been a f- professional fighter for more than 60% <laughs> of his lifetime. Wow. I mean, it's, it, it's absolutely amazing. And so this is what Errol Spence has got to deal with, expectations game. And if he, even if he wins every round, but if, if Mackie, Manny Pacquiao survives, he's going to take a hit. And I'm yeah. sure that Terrence Crawford will take some hits if that <laughs> happens yeah. at him, if that happens. Yeah, poor Terrence. He uh, did not get that fight. While he was with top rank, that fight fell through even this year when Aram uh, tried to negotiate it as much as you uh, want to believe that or not. But with Errol Spence, I mean, I've t- spoken about this before. I said, if you want to create a fighter in like a video game, and we are getting a video game, the Esports <laughs> Boxing Club. But Errol Spence is like almost like the guy you would want to do. I mean, he throws volume. I think he's he yeah. probably still is highest uh, punches per round at welterweight. Probably lands the most. Uh, he might have been overtaken in that department. But he's top two or three in basically every offensive category at 147. Yeah. But the, the power, like if, you, if you're going in there looking to knock out Pacquiao, I, I just don't see that. Uh, I don't know what you think about that. I, I could see a, like another Mikey Garcia type you know, just, you know, a domination because that's what it was when it was Spence versus Mikey. And, and it could also be uh, like uh, Spence's comeback fight against Danny Garcia. He won most every round. He, he, the expectations were kind of suspended in that fight because he was coming back from the car crash. Yeah. What, which Errol Spence are, are we going to see? We saw a pretty darn good Errol Spence. So now the, uh, the expectations are somewhat elevated again. I, I see um, I see Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, the way he takes risks. This is, I mean, you take a look at his career. There's so many fights in which they said, what in God's name is he thinking taking <laughs> this fight? I mean, the Thurman fight was one of those. Yeah. And he came out, he floored Thurman in the first round. He won that fight. He became the first fighter to hold championships in four different decades. I mean, yeah. the history he created. So he really has nothing to lose in this fight. Yeah. Uh, anything that he does good, he's going to get credit for. And uh, on the other side, everything is going to be on Spence and he's got to deliver. Yeah, it's interesting. It's so intriguing. It's the it's the fight of the of the year. It's the fight of the summer for all these reasons that we just named. And if it was a movie, I would like to see Pacquiao, you know, like put up a good fight, obviously loses, passes the torch to Spence, 
he gets like a hero's goodbye, gets put on the shoulders, gets taken away. But, you know, as we know, with boxing doesn't always end up like that. But you're the historian. You're the guy when it comes to, you know, perspective. If Pacquiao wins this fight, where do you have him as like all time great? Where do you have him as all time great as a welterweight? What do you got? Well, you know, I think that if he wins this fight and, and if the WBA does not designate this as a super championship or whatever Manny Pacquiao could become the first five-time <laughs> welterweight champion and become one of a very few people I think Manuel Medina and Sugar Ray Robinson are the two to have five different reigns in one weight class wow. uh, and then you go to the fact that he is an eight division champion if you count the ring championship that he won as well um, the fact that he's doing it at 42 years old he was a champion back in 1998 uh, the, 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 the depth and breadth and length of his championship arc is immense. And so based on that, you could easily put Manny Pacquiao in the top 20 fighters of all time. And that's a very hard group to break into considering the numbers of the occupants in that stratosphere. That's great. See, that right there is what I'm looking for. Don't tell me. Don't tell me he's going to be top five all time. Give me the right answer. You know, top 20 <laughs> with, you know, the context that you just laid out there. It's an incredible, incredible accomplishment, even considering that the guy has seven losses, considering he was iced by Marquez and we thought that was the end. But now we're going on year 2021 with Manny Pacquiao taking on the <laughs> biggest risks, the biggest fights, commanding pay-per-view dollars, you know, holding up divisions. What a, what a legend, Manny Pacquiao. Lee Groves, you're a legend. I'm so happy that you came on the show. I'm so happy you made your debut. I'm going to have to get you on here more consistently because you bring the noise. A great follow on Twitter. Everyone go out and follow Lee, Lee Groves Boxing. He's the heart and soul of CompuBox. Uh, great colleague, great guy. Lee, you're the man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dan. A very special thanks to our guest this week, Mr. Lee Groves. Uh, he is the best. Uh, the traveling man, you probably read his exploits in uh, Ring Magazine, the digital stuff, and just a, a great friend of CompuBox. He's been part of the CompuBox family for over a decade now. Punch counter, uh, you know, researcher. He puts together the best research notes that you'll see me tweet about. You know, put together those uh, videos every week on, on Twitter, and they go out to the networks too. So Lee Groves is a man behind the scenes uh, that should get a lot of credit because he loves boxing. He eats, breathes, and sleeps it, as you uh, just heard there interesting stuff especially the pacquiao stuff you know manny pacquiao i don't think a lot of people are picking him to win this fight with spence uh he is spence is a big time favorite i think the, the odds just came out but if pacquiao does pull this off if he has one more big night left in him man would that be spectacular that's up there with foreman you know beating michael moore uh you know he'd be the top 20 all-time great according to lee groves uh, intriguing stuff. This summer is going to be awesome. I mean, we're heading into June. We got the, uh, you know, Mayweather, Logan Paul, whatever that is, whether you like it or not, uh, it's going to be an event. You got Mario Barrios taking on, you know, Tank Davis at 140 pounds. Uh, you got the uh, big showdown at 154 with Charlo and Castaño. Hopefully that ends up at uh, Barclays Center in New York. And did you see this over in the video game world? The boxing world's even buzzing, even in the video game stuff. The esports boxing club. We're a part of it with CompuBox. I'm not just saying this because we're a part of it, but the game is amazing. The gameplay is outstanding. And they just added Canelo Alvarez. The face of boxing is now the face of the Esports Boxing Club video game. So between that, between all the big fights, between all the big drama, boxing world, on fire right now. We got you covered every single week. See you next week.